Hello Opal's users. In this video tutorial, I'd like to show you how to set up your Opal system so that your members, users, patrons, students, teachers of the library can log in and place reserves and or holds. Two points to start out with. One, if your users do know their barcode numbers registered in your Opal system, that is a very good thing because we have a setting that you can authenticate by member ID. In other words, if I know my barcode number, I don't need a password. I can log into the system, place reserves, see what I have out on loan, see what reserves I've placed, just by using my unique barcode number. If you would rather they self-register, that may take a little bit more time at the CERC desk or the reference desk or whatever, um, because they'll need to know their barcode numbers. So a student might come up to you and say, I'd like to self-register, I don't know my number. You'll have to give the student their barcode number, and then um, you could show them how to self-register. You can also print out barcodes quite easily and place them on cardstock or plastic cards and hand them out to the members of your library, the patrons of your library. Another very good point is if you have email addresses in your members database, your patron database. Email addresses are a great asset because after someone places a hold or a reserve on an item, you can easily email them when the item becomes available. There is also an option to call them, but we have found in schools and church and different libraries that we uh, serve have found that the email is the most efficient way to let the folks know. So having an email account on your user's database is great. And also finally to repeat myself, if they know their barcode, that makes everything even that more simple. Now I'm going to start running through the process of setting up your system. The first thing you'll want to do is go to administration preferences. When the preference menu opens, I will go to system preferences right here at the top. I'll click system preferences and I'm going to go down the page a little bit right here to reservation system type. You'll want to turn on the enhanced reserve request reserve management system. That's the best way to do that. And then you'll see that once this is turned on, all the items will have a little orange button to click that says request. And it also gives you a more granular report, more options uh, to see what's pending, what's active, what's on hold, what's on reserve. So the enhanced reserve uh, system is the best way to go. So again, you'll go to admin, system preferences, number two, and you'll turn on the enhanced reserve management system. So I'll save this. The next thing you'll want to do is go to your user types and turn on a few things so that they can self-reserve. Go to Administration, Preferences, and when the Preferences menu comes up, I will go to User Types. And if, um, if you're a school library, oftentimes when schools do this, they set it up for the teachers first, kind of as a soft opening of allowing self-reserves and holds. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to my teacher, User Type. And by the way, this is a demo database, so there won't be any privacy issues. I'm going to click the pad, and I'm going down to Library. I'm clicking this Library, and I'm going to click Self-Reserve. You do not need to click Self-Booking. Um, that is another module that we're developing for people to book rooms or book large amounts of books at certain times of the year and things like that. I would not give that to the members of the library at this point anyway. Um, so I'm in the teacher user type. I've clicked self-reserve. Now up here at the top, you'll want to click access my file so that the person uh, can see what they've got on reserve, what they've got out, etc. If you're going to do self-register, you'll have to allow password change. 
Allowing a profile update means that the student or the member or the user of the library could go in and change just a little bit of data on their record. So sometimes schools particularly say no to that. Um, now finally, the authenticate by member ID, password not required. This is the most popular way to do it, clicking yes. That way all your members, your users, patrons need to do is have their barcode number and they can log in and, and go to their accounts, uh, place reserves, see what's out on loan, etc. By the way, they don't have any other rights, so don't worry about that. So I'm going to leave it as authenticate by member ID in this video and we'll run through that process. I'm going to not even bother allowing a password change because when you're using Authenticate by Member ID, you don't need a password. So now I'm going to go down here to the bottom of this record and save it. And it's been saved successfully. Okay, I'm going back to the home screen. Before I show the actual process of a user placing a reserve or a hold, I'd like to run through something in Administration. I'm going to Administration Preferences, and I'm going to go to Item Types and speak about Reserves versus Holds. So I'm clicking Item Types, third one down on the Preferences menu. And I'm just going to look at, say, uh, the book database. Many of your systems, it might say G, whatever. Now, the reserve period, 30 days, I particularly don't think it's long enough. Especially here, if a teacher can take a book out for 30 days and renew it for 30 days and renew it for 10 times, um, that would far exceed the 30 days here. Bear in mind, though, if a student, or if a teacher wants to, or somebody wants to renew a book, a note will come up saying there's a hold on this book so then you can make the determination of whether to renew the book or not but I suggest the reserve period be a high number a hundred a hundred and twenty that way the book the reserve will not expire for that many days 30 I think is too small now the hold period 10 days so during normal times in a public library, if when they're open, I know we're in difficult times, or when the schools are open and you see John Schuster in the hallway and his book is in, John, you have 10 days to come pick it up, otherwise it'll expire. I'm just making a note during these times of, with, with libraries being closed and schools having to make all sorts of adjustments, you might need to make the whole period a little longer depending on how things unfold this fall for schools and public libraries as well. So the reserve period, you want to make that a large number so my reserve doesn't expire. I might say to the librarian, I'll wait all year for this book. So you want to have a high reserve number. Under normal circumstances, I usually see five to ten days for the hold. That means they have five to ten days to pick it up. And then it goes off a hold automatically and shows available in the catalog. So I'm logged out as an administrator and I'm going to log in as a teacher wanting to place a reserve or hold. Just remember you've gone to system administration, you've turned on the enhanced reserves, you've gone to user types, and you've clicked authenticate by member ID if, if that's the way you'll go, which I think is the easiest. Um, and you've also gone to the user types and clicked self-reserve and saved it. Then you also, uh, I also mentioned that you should go to item types and look at the reserve period being a high number in the hold period. In normal circumstances is five to ten days, but during these times you might need to make that a little longer. Okay, I'm going to log in as a teacher from home to place a reserve on an item. I don't need these here. This is, I'm just going to take this off. And you'll see, because I set up Authenticate by Member ID, password is optional if you log in as a student, dot, dot, dot. So I'm going to put in my barcode number. And, and there's the register account, by the way, if you go that way. I'm logging in. And you'll see Welcome John up at the top here. Okay, 
I'm going to do a search for science. And when the books come up, you will see a request button. And your members, your users of the library, all they have to do is click that request button. So here we are. Now I see that the engineer's wife is available. So if I request it, it'll go right to a hold because it's not out. It's in the library. You can hold it in your hand. So I'm going to click request. Because my email is filled in, it's all there. It's all ready to go. I only want one copy. My notice options are for email. I could put my phone number in, but I don't know many people that do that. Uh, the expiry date. A teacher may need this, or a user of your library, a patron of your library may need a book, but they may need it only, f they may not need it after a certain date. So they could put an expiry date in here. In other words, if I can't get the book by then, I don't need it. I'm not going to do that. I'm submitting my request. Your request is submitted for handling. We will confirm that we have received this request and then we'll advise its status by email. You can check this request status on your account at any time. So I'll close that. Now I'm going to log out as the teacher, log back in as a librarian, and show you the rest of the process. I've just logged in as the library staff and I this pops up automatically and I see one reserves needs processing. You can click that and it'll take you right to the enhanced reserve system to put the book forward. I'm not going to click that because I'd like to show you where it is. So I'm going to admin, reports and tools, but you could click that and it'll take you where I'm going anyway, but I thought it would be good for you to see this. I'm going to reserved items under circulation statistics report. I'm clicking reserved items. Once this opens, we will see that we have a pending request. The requester is John Schuster. Here's the book, the call number, the copy, the request date, um, the expiry date, which is, ignore that, I haven't set the system up um, for teachers, so just ignore that. Normally that will be um, a longer period, but I didn't set it up when I was in my item type, so just ignore that for this video. Uh, normally it'll be the expiry date for a hold will be whatever you say, 5, 10, or during these not normal times, maybe it's 20 days you'll give a student or a member to come pick up the book. Okay. If we move over, I'm going to approve it, or you can reject it, or you could print this. I'm simply going to approve it. Once I approve it, I click Process Checked Actions. Okay, I've approved it. I've process checked actions. Now, if I go back, if I go to Active, right now I have nothing there. If I go back to Pending, it's gone where it is now because that book was in the library you go to the on hold tab and you'll see my request right here now you can cancel it you can print it you can click the email and it'll send an email to the patron showing telling them that the book is available for, for pick, pickup and it will tell them how long they have to pick it up. Again, ignore my date here. I just didn't adjust it right. Um, or you can click ready. I suggest clicking ready, which there's a subtle difference between on hold and ready. Ready means you've already gone and pulled the book. On hold means, well, I haven't pulled the book yet, but I'm going to email the patron anyway. And I think it's always good to go see if the book is in the library and not lost or something. So I'm going to click ready. And I'm marking as ready and going to email. So I've marked as ready. A reserve notice has been sent successfully. And there's my email address. And I'll close. Remember now that we just clicked ready and email. And here's the notice that I got uh, from the library. And it came from the Opals High School Library, a reserve item notice. The following item reserved is available and being held for you at the library for you to pick up before 6-9.
Again, I'm sorry, I don't want to stop the recording and go back and change it, but this is where I should have changed for teachers my hold period to something like 10 or 20 days. So just, just bear that in mind. Uh, and it's on hold. So that's what the reserve item would look like, the notice, once you click ready and email. I'm back to the res Enhanced Reserve Request Management System just to note a few things. Active will be where if items are out and a user, a member of the library, places a reserve on it, that'll show as active. The reserve is active uh, until the book comes back in and then it'll be on hold, i.e. over here on hold like we saw for mine. Completed means that the transaction, my on hold, the reserve has already been completed and everything's done. Uh, rejected means for some reason you rejected the request. Canceled means um, either the user, the member of your library, canceled it on his or her own or you canceled it. And expired would be those items like here's a, uh, one that was expired because it was a long time ago. The request date was in the 2019s, and the, it expired on September 17th. So that's uh, the expiration. And process tracking just allows you to see what's been going on in your library, um, requesters, the tracking, when they did it, and things like that. And you could have multiple pages of this. So I thought I should show you that as well. Sorry about the little pop-ups at the bottom. Um, so that's the Enhanced Reserve Request Management System, and once you do a few, you can practice on your own account or create a fake patron and uh, use that patron to do some requests. Okay, the final thing I'm going to do now is log out as the librarian, log back in as a member, a teacher, and look at my reserves. So now I'm going to log in and see if my reserve shows up what shows up on my account so I'm logging in I'm logged in as John I can go to my file I can see if I have any loans out I don't think I do but I could see my loans let's see nope I could go to my file my request right here and there's my request and it's ready right here you'll see right over here its status is ready and I had one request and it went right to hold because it was in the library. If the person didn't want it, they decided they just didn't want it, they could cancel it on their own by pressing cancel over here. So that is from the perspective of the user of your library going in and looking at their own account. I know this video is a bit long. I hope it's helpful. Uh, and you can always email tech support call tech support and we're glad to help you out. All the best.